Gerald B. Jordan, in recognition of the distinction you have brought to the University of Arkansas and your significant impact on the state of Arkansas, the nation, and the world, the University of Arkansas proudly bestows upon you the Silas Hunt Legacy Award. Congratulations. Wow. <laughs> Lee Bodenhammer, um, Julian Stewart, and Lewis Epley asked me if I was going to make a speech. They said, well, you're a journalist. I said, well, no, we cover speeches. We don't, we don't make speeches. I did make a few notes that I'm going to give to Dr. Robinson and ask him to read. <laughs> Thank you, thank you all so, so very much. And Mike, thank you for that gracious introduction. I'm, as you all can see from the video, I take this honor quite seriously. In fact, I'm sorry that Vice President Biden isn't here tonight to express in blunt terms <laughs> just how I feel about this occasion. I'm so flattered, so flattered that the committee would select me. More flattered to be included in the company of my distinguished fellow honorees, and most flattered to follow the inaugural class of Silas Hunt honorees. What a time. Now a time, when I worked at the Boston Globe, I learned this, a time is an occasion that Boston ward healers use when they're honoring one of their old pals. It also frequently coincides with when they're trying to get rid of someone. <laughs> I recall from my Globe days that one character would say, why don't we just give him a time and say goodbye to him? <laughs> well, let me say how much I truly appreciate this time, although I hope it's not goodbye. My thank you list is so long that I'm reluctant to call names, but Senator Pryor, please tell Barbara that my peeps are in the house again tonight. And for that, I am filled with joy and appreciation. There's one person here who has known me all my life, two people who've known me all their lives, And of course, my wife has been with me for half my life. <laughs> and family, I'm so grateful to your being here tonight. And friends, classmates, my goodness, there are a room full of people here who know my secrets. <laughs> I guess beyond gratitude, I should look at this dear, dear honor as a mark of achievement. Those persons of faith will understand me when I talk about the afterlife, and I stake no claim to a place in glory. But I do hold fast to Randall Ferguson's heeding that one day we'll face our ancestors, and they're going to ask us, what did you do with your freedom? So with great pride of accomplishment, I'll tell them, that I learned to read and to write, and it was legal. <laughs> I'll tell them that I graduated from the university that they couldn't fathom or even dream of entering, and it was challenging. I'll tell them I voted, and nobody clubbed my head as I entered or left the polls. And one day when the votes were counted, I'll tell them that we elected a man whose father was Kenyan and whose mother was Kansan. And it was amazing. I'll tell them that I wrote for some big city newspapers and it was a blast. I'll tell them that I taught the progeny of those with whom we once were told 
We couldn't drink the same water. We couldn't ride on the same bus. We couldn't dine in the same restaurants. We couldn't live in the same neighborhood. I taught their progeny, and it was just. Thank you, Silas Hunt Committee, for making all that possible. Thank you, Silas Hunt, for what you did in paving the way for us. Thank you all for tonight.